This is 1.6, other types of equations and applications. Um, there's only about 10 problems here, but we definitely want to make sure we try to address some examples that will help you um, through those different types of equations. So the first type that we have here is um, the rational equations, which basically means um, equations with fractions, okay? Then eventually we're going to be working on, um, we're not going to do work and rate problems. That's not taught in this course. Um, then we'll get to equations with radicals. Then we'll get to rational um, exponents. And then I think we get to an example of equation in quadratic form. Okay, so we do hit all the other topics. Um, so a rational equation is an equation that has a rational expression for one or more terms. Rational means fraction. So if you have a fraction in one or more of your terms, it's now a fraction equation, also known as a rational equation. To solve a rational equation, multiply each side by the lowest common denominator of the terms of the equation to eliminate fractions and then solve the resulting equation. Be sure to check all proposed solutions in the original equation. There's some stuff happening. If I solve the equation and I find out that the answer is 5, what happens if I try to plug in 5 here? You get 0 in the denominator. If you get 0 in the denominator, that's an undefined number. So how on earth would you know if this undefined number is the same as this undefined number? when you don't know its value, right? So you can't have a solution that makes your denominators zero. So make sure when you find an answer that you always check that answer to make sure that it's a good one, okay? So here, if you notice, these two have a denominator, this term does not. If you wanna find the LCD, multiply any distinct denominators together, okay? Or distinct factors of the denominator. But this is just one term and this is a binomial that cannot be factored. So they are my factors. So my LCD is going to be both of those guys together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take two X minus three over two and we're gonna multiply it by two times x plus one. Then I'm gonna take the next fraction and multiply that by two times x plus one. And then I'm gonna take the other side of the equation and multiply that by two times x plus one. So here, the 2 will cancel, leaving me with 2x minus 3 times x plus 1. Here the x plus 1's will cancel, leaving me with 5 times 2. Here nothing cancels. So if I put those together, I get 2x times x plus 1. Now, if we keep going, we're going to solve this. We have to get it into that quadratic form. That is obviously 10. And then if I minus 2x squared on both sides, it really doesn't matter which one you move over because they're the same and they actually end up wiping each other out. Um, normally you wanna get it equal to zero, so I'm gonna go ahead and minus 2x at the same time and notice those also cancel and I end up with negative three X, and if I combine my like terms, I get a positive seven. And then if I minus seven on both sides, and then if I divide by negative three on both sides, I get negative and a negative is a positive, seven thirds. Oops, you can't see, sorry. So here we canceled out the two X squared, and then I went ahead and moved this term over by minusing two on both sides but it actually ended up canceling out both of those terms 
So I had negative 3x left over, combined my constants, got positive 7, and then solved this equation by minusing the 7 and then dividing by the negative 3, and this is the answer I got. Now, does that answer make any of the denominators equal to 0? It does not. When I This is a 2. It's not going to change from being a 2, and 2 is not 0, so that one's good. This one, if I plug in 7 thirds, I'm just going to get a bigger number. It's not going to be 0. So this answer will work, which means that is going to be my solution. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So I apologize for that. It just came out of nowhere. Be careful, Mommy. Oh, thank you. Okay. Now this next example is um, there's there's a denominator on two terms again. This five does not have a denominator. Um, but it's the same denominator. Now remember, for the LCD, you only need to multiply distinct factors together in the denominator. These are the same. So the LCD here is going to be just x minus 5. So I'm going to take this fraction and multiply it by x minus 5. I'm going to take the 5 and multiply it by x minus 5. And the other fraction on the other side and multiply it by x minus 5. The denominators cancel, leaving me with x plus 5 times x minus 5 equal to 5. Then if I take this positive 5 and distribute it, I get 5x minus 25 equal to 5, or 6x minus 25 equal to 5. Keep solving. We get 6x equals 30. Divide both sides by 6, we get 5. Now what happens when we plug in 5 in there? We get that problem, right? Undefined, undefined. So this, although it's the answer we did, we got, everything is perfect. Everything is correct. This is the answer we got. But since it doesn't work, they call it an extraneous solution. So it is a solution, but it doesn't check out. So what is your answer to this problem? Your answer is there is no solution. Okay. So even though you did everything you could to get that problem, it just doesn't work. Okay. And later on in the course, um, not until the second unit, so next week, um, you'll learn why that's an extraneous solution. This, this means something, okay, and it means something in the graph but we won't learn until next week. For now, this equation has no solution. So let's try it with two more problems and we'll see where we go from here. So now notice this one is good, I cannot factor that. This one is good, I cannot factor it, but this one is not, I can factor that. I can factor out an x. So what would the else be in this case. I have these factors that are the same and then I have these factors that are the same. So the LCD has to include both of those distinct factors. So I'm going to do x minus 5 over x minus 3 times this LCD. 1 over x times this LCD and then negative 7 and I'm going to use the factored version times the LCD. So the x minus 3's cancel, the x's cancel. Here both of them cancel. So here I end up with x minus 5 times x plus 1 times x minus 3 equal to negative 7. Um, give me one second, okay? Let me finish my recording. Okay, so we're going to distribute this x here I apologize for the interruption. We are still under quarantine over here, and so I do still have my three-year-old currently asking me for goldfish. Okay, so multiply the one, we get plus one x, and we get negative three. 
And then if I combine my like terms here, I get negative 4x minus 3. And remember, this is a quadratic. You want it equal to 0 before you try to solve it. So I'm going to add 7 to both sides. And I get x squared minus 4x plus 4. Now you could factor that. I do tend to be a little lazy, so we do have a method on solving quadratics that I don't even have to think about how to factor it. I just use the quadratic formula. So here, a is equal to one, b is equal to negative four, and c is equal to positive four. So negative b plus or minus b squared minus four a c all over two a. Let's see what we get here. We get 16 minus 16, which is zero over two, the square root of zero is zero. So it doesn't matter whether I add zero or I subtract zero, I'm still gonna get four over two, which is two. So there's my answer. Does two make any of the denominators zero? Two minus three is not zero. Two itself is not zero. Two squared, which is four, minus three times two, which is six, that's also not going to be zero, okay? So it checks out. This is a good answer, and I will include it in my solution set. Now, for part B, let's see. Let me draw a line here. Now, again, we've got to factor this. It's a difference of squares, so x times x, 5 times 5, 1 with the plus, 1 with the minus, so these match and these match. So the LCD is going to be both of those guys together. Each distinct factor. And so we're going to take this fraction and multiply it by that LCD. We're going to take this fraction and multiply it by the LCD. And we're going to take this fraction and I'm going to use the factored version and multiply it by the LCD. Ah, we're running out of room there. So both of them will cancel over here. The x minus 5 goes there. The x plus 5 goes there. So we end up with x times x minus 5 plus 5 times x plus 5 equal to just 50. And then if I distribute my x, and distribute this positive 5. Um, these actually cancel. And I have this equation. I do have a square, but I just have the square. I don't have a trinomial. So I don't need to get it equal to 0. I actually would rather use the square root property. So I'm going to minus 25 on both sides and I get 25. And then if I take the square root of both sides, we get plus or minus the square root of 25, which equals plus or minus five. So I have two answers. I have five and I have negative five. We have to check both. If I plug five into here, it's good. If I plug five into here, I get zero. So this one is one of those extraneous solutions. Now negative five. If I plug negative five right there, it's gonna make a zero downstairs, which means this is also an extraneous solution. So even though I did everything correctly, both of these guys are bad guys, right? So my answer here would be no solution. And that's the end of this method, um, or this type of equation. So now you've got um, some pretty good examples so that you can hopefully get in there and get the homework assignment done, it's at least when it comes to the fraction equations. I'm going to continue in another video um, and show you how to do some of the other equations that are in this section as well.